Hey everybody, I'm Chris, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about mortgage rates. Now, if you haven't watched part one of my four part series on how to identify the best mortgage lender, then you should stop right now, go watch part one, because you're probably doing it all wrong on how to shop for the best mortgage lender. Now, I'm gonna trust that you watch part one and that you're here and moving on in the sequential order that you should, okay? All right, so in part two of today, I'm gonna to be talking about mortgage rates, but I'm gonna break this into a three part series. That's gonna make the rest of the part of the part four. Rest of the part of the part four. <laughs> so yeah, so this is part two, and I'm gonna be starting with mortgage rates. You know, I believe no like a pro in order to shop like a pro. So we're gonna start by understanding what impacts rates. And then in the next part, which is gonna be part three, I'm gonna be discussing with you on how rates are calculated. And then on the last part of this four part series is how to rate shop. Now you'll see here in what impacts rates, there's two buckets, what you control versus what's outside of your control. Now let's get what's outside of your control out of the way. The first one is market dynamics. And what I mean by that is Wall Street. And this is outside your control because neither you nor I can control Wall Street. We can't control when the feds are gonna to decide to rate hike, when another pandemic's gonna hit, when a vaccine's gonna work or not. So these are the things that's outside your control. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now the second topic is gonna to be lender or broker profit margin. And I could include banks here too, but what I mean by this is, you know, this industry is not a not-for-profit industry. So a lender or a broker is gonna have a specific margin, profit or revenue that they're gonna to try to earn per transaction. Now this is gonna vary based on lender to lender. So I just want you to understand that you're not really gonna have control over this, but if you've done it right and you've identified your set of mortgage lenders based on part one, then you should be fine. That you would have a good mix of lenders to choose from. Now here in what you control, let's go down the list. First is loan type. Loan type, what I mean by that is conventional loan or conforming loan. It could be a non-conforming loan like a jumbo loan. It could be an FHA loan. It could be a VA loan, USDA loan. All these types of loans actually impact how rates are going to be. Now, the second one is going to be loan purpose. Loan purpose, what I mean by that is, are you doing a purchase transaction? Are you doing a straight refinance to lower your payment? Or are you doing cash out for debt consolidation or pulling cash out of your equity to renovate your house, consolidate debt? What are you trying to do? That's gonna determine how rates are gonna be. Not all of them are gonna be treated equally. Property type. So, do you have a single family? Is it a townhouse? Is it a condo? That impacts rates. Property use. I hope you knew that if you have a primary residence versus an investment property versus a second or a vacation home, impacts rates as well. Now, if you're looking for the best rates, I'll share at the very end what of each of these criteria that you want. Credit score, so do you have a high credit? So what do you consider as high credit? In the mortgage industry, typically it's anything over 760 is gonna be triple A credit. Sometimes lenders will give preferential treatment if you have a credit score of above an 800, but it's very rare. Most of the time it's gonna be anything over 760. And then kind of like double A is 740 to 760, you know, A is going to be 720 to 740, and then like a B plus is gonna be somewhere around 700 to 720. And then anything under 700 is going to be like a B, C, D, F, depending on F and you don't qualify. So what credit score do you have? Loan to value ratio. So what this really means is it's just, it's just math, it's a fraction. It's loan over the value of your property. Not the purchase price, but the appraised value of your property. So for example, if you have a half a million dollar loan for a million dollar home, that means you have a 50% loan to value ratio. If you have a $800,000 loan for a million dollar home, that means you have an 80% loan to value ratio. Now, if you have a second mortgage, then we're gonna be looking at the combined loan to value ratio. So do you have only one loan? Do you have two loans? That's really gonna make a difference on what the rates are gonna be. Lock days. Now what this is, is basically mortgage rate lock days. So how long is the rate lock going to be for? Is it gonna be for 15 days? Is it gonna be for 30 days? Is it gonna be for 45? Are you gonna be floating your rate, which means you're not gonna be locking it at the very beginning and you're gonna be playing the market which I discourage, but sure, if you want to, and you love Vegas, all to you. But are you gonna be floating it, or are you gonna be locking it? And if you do lock it, is it gonna be for 15, 30, 45? Now, there is a buyer beware in this area, and I've noticed this with some other loan officers out there, where when they're quoting you, what they're gonna do is they're gonna probably quote you for the shortest lock 
term possible. So what I mean by that is let's say like a 10 or a 14 or a 15 day lock if those are available. And they're gonna quote for that rate lock days to try to compete and beat the quotes that you're receiving. Now, the buyer beware part is, is that person able to close the loan in that many days, in that short period of time? Are they able to or are they not? Do they have a track record for it or do they not? And that's the thing that you're gonna to have to question when you're receiving your rate quotes because sometimes, you know, 14, 15 days, which is great. We've had 12 day uh, clear to closes. We've had five day clear to closes, but it doesn't happen often. And typically it's because, you know, title is slow or appraisal is slow these days. And so a 14, 15 day lock, let's say the rate lock expires. Do you have to come out of pocket for it? And for how many days are you gonna be extending that lock? Because so, sometimes it's gonna be an eighth of a percent to a quarter of a percent in penalty to extend that rate lock. So just ask those questions. If it's a 15 day rate lock, then what's gonna be the penalty if you go beyond the lock expiration? Number of units. Is it a one unit, two unit, three unit, four unit? That's gonna impact your rates. Property location. What I mean by property location, I know some loan offers are gonna be watching this and saying like, what, is, what does Chris mean by property location? And this is what I mean. If you are living, let's say in San Bernardino County, or you're trying to buy a house in San Bernardino County and the housing price is gonna be right around $800,000, you're gonna be putting down anywhere from five to 10%. And that means that your loan amount is gonna be over 647,000. So in San Bernardino County, they don't allow a high balance conforming loan which means if they don't allow it, which impacts the loan type, it's gonna go into a jumbo loan category. That means that it's gonna impact your rate. So property location. I live in Montgomery County. Montgomery County does allow a high balance conforming loan that goes all the way up to $970,000. So if I was to buy a $1.2 million home and I was able to put down enough down payment to get my loan amount below that 970 threshold, then I would be qualifying for a conventional loan. Whereas in, again, San Bernardino County in California, they don't allow the high balance. So it would be going into that jumbo category. So property location is going to be important. Now, having gone through all of these categories, I'm sure you're either thinking or you wanna ask me, what is the ultimate best scenario to get the best rate possible for each of these categories? So I'm gonna share that with you just for the conventional loan because there is, you know, there's conforming or conventional there's going to be VA, FHA, USDA, and then jumbos are non-conforming. But you know, I can't go through all of those scenario topics, so I'm gonna go through just conventional. So for a conventional loan, 30-year fixed, vanilla, we're looking at a loan type conventional, loan purpose. Um, it's If you're buying, obviously it's a purchase, but if it's a refinance, it's not gonna be a cash out. It's just gonna be a simple rate and term, what we call it. So no cash out refinance. Property type, single family, property use, primary residence, credit score, anything over 760, loan to value ratio, anything under 60%, lock days, yeah, it could be 15 days, but it's not that big of an improvement. I would just go with a 30-day lock and just call it a day. Now, property location is going to be tricky it's because you know we want that loan amount to be under $647,000 because if it goes into the high balance conventional, there is still a little bit of a hit, but not nothing major. So if we kept it under $647,000 and the LTV is at 60%, then you know any property location is going to be fine. Now, if you like this video, you'll probably like this other video on how to make your pre-approval letter not worthless. So I hope you consider subscribing, liking this video, and I'll see you in part three.